Good morning. I'm Rose, and I'm here to talk about our Indigenous brothers and sisters, in particular the residential schools. Dear St. Joseph brothers and sisters, you and I both know that it's only God's love that heals, and each one of us has God's love inside us to share, and each one of us has gifts, gifts to share. And I think the perfect example of gift sharing and love was last month with our dear Pope Francis when he made the trip to Canada to in person apologize to our Indigenous brothers and sisters. It is so important. And he has shown us, each one of us, there's three reasons for us to move forward. One, we're all Canadian citizens. Second of all, we're all Roman Catholic. And third of all, we follow the example of Pope Francis. And October 25th, I'm asking you, all parishioners, on behalf of St. Joseph, to come out and give two hours of your time to hear the truth of what happened in these residential schools, but also to share the love inside of you and the gifts inside of you to have some group out discussions where we can hear about your ideas on how we can move forward steps to reconciliation. As we hear in the Bible from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verse 18, little children, love not in words and speeches, but in truth and action. And that's what October the 25th is about. We would like to see every St. Joseph parishioner aged 13 and older to come out on October 25th. Invite neighbors and friends. This is a community issue and it's a community solution. We'll be at the back of the church to get your name and information. We need to know how many people are coming so we can properly facilitate that evening. Thank you. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we prepare to celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We will be having a parish barbecue on the church grounds on Sunday, August 21st, following the 12 noon Mass. This weekend is your last chance to sign up for this event, as we would like to purchase the food early this coming week. Please pick up a registration form from the foyer and place with your payment into the collection box. We kindly ask that donations of penny sale items and raffle baskets are dropped off at the parish office by Tuesday. If you attend the 12 noon Mass on Sundays, please park in the Blessed Trinity parking lot next Sunday since we will be setting up the church parking lot for our parish picnic. We are also looking to borrow canopy tents for shade for the picnic. If you have one to loan, please drop off at the office this week. Thank you. The Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, or RCIA, program will begin again this September for those wishing to enter into the Catholic faith. This program is open to adults that have not been baptized, those baptized in another faith, and baptized Catholics who have not received their sacraments or instruction in the faith. Please contact the parish office by September to register. Our celebrant today is Father Rico. Please stand and join in our processional hymn. Fit into the 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. As we gather at this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Manny Coletti and Frank Nafek. I invite all the special friends of Jesus to come forward for our children's liturgy. Come on down, friends. That's your time. We're all sitting in this section today. How fantastic. <laughs> we got a couple, a sprinkle. Okay, friends, come gather around, Father. Okay, why don't you just take a seat? Yeah, okay. <laughs> fantastic. Friends, today we hear that Jesus teaches us that we have to have courage. Do you know what the word courage means? What does it mean to be have courage? Does anyone know? Anybody? All right, this is a great topic to learn. Okay, Joseph, what do you think courage means? Give it a try. Yeah, to be strong, right? To stand up for something. So we, got Jesus, <laughs> thank you for kissing your sister. Fantastic. <laughs> Jesus wants us to be courageous. So let's be courageous for Jesus, okay? Let's ask Jesus to bless you. Ready? May Almighty God bless you, friends, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've got to make the sign of the cross, friends. Ready? With our right hands. Other hand, the other hand, this one. The one on this side of our body. Look, I've got to turn my back. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great. Who's leading us today? Miss Deirdre, Miss Rose? We're going to play follow the leader. Okay, we'll see you later, friends. Come out this way, please. Follow the leader, friends. Parade. Bastion's going to hold the book. Let's go. But at times we fail to be courageous in nature, standing up for what is right in our world. We bow our heads and ask for God's mercy, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those who are in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The officials said to the king, This man ought to be put to death, because he is discouraging the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such words to them. For this man is not seeking the welfare of this people, but their harm. King Zedekiah said, Here he is, he is in your hands, for the king is powerless against you. So they took Jeremiah, and they threw him into the cistern of Malchiah, the king's son, which was in the court of the guard, letting Jeremiah down by ropes. Now there was no water in the cistern, but only mud, and Jeremiah sank in the mud. So Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, an officer in the king's house, left the king's house and spoke to the king. My lord king, These men have acted wickedly in all they did to the prophet Jeremiah by throwing him into the cistern to die there of hunger, for there is no bread left in the city. Then the king commanded Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, Take three men with you from here and pull the prophet Jeremiah up from the cistern before he dies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider Jesus, who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The gift of courage, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit given to us on the day of our confirmation, is a gift that we need to continue to rely upon and use in our daily life. To be a friend of Jesus is to be someone who is not lukewarm. Rather, Jesus is very clear about God's position with those who are lukewarm. He wants to spit them out from his mouth. In other words, there is no use for people who are lukewarm. To be a friend of Jesus means that we are to be bold, that we are to be courageous, and we are especially to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. There are many examples in when this is true. To stand up for the position. Friends, focus on Father Rico. I see where your eyes are. This is very important. A homily, this is the time to be fed. Don't be distracted by people around you. Focus. This is the Holy Spirit speaking through me. For many of you, this is the only teaching you get all week. Focus. Mass is important. These are the unpacking of the scriptures. Capish? That's you. Yes? Fantastic. Good morning, 1030 Mass. Right? We are to stand up to be bold, not to be lukewarm. How many times does God ask us 
to stand up for someone? Are we willing to do just that? We hear in the first reading that the prophet is taken captive. He's doing what God is asking him to do, but nobody's supporting him. So he's arrested. And who is it? A good Jew that goes to the king and says, he should be out of there. It's not the Jew. Who is it? The Ethiopian, who really has nothing to do with the situation, who says, you know what, king? This isn't right. This needs to be changed. And the boldness of the Ethiopian moves the heart of the king, and the prophet continues to do God's work. How many times was St. Paul faced with the same, same situations? Throughout the scriptures, when we read from St. Paul, he talks about the fact that he is arrested, finally released, then he has a choice to make, to continue to be bold and courageous, or he could just go on with his life and ask the Holy Spirit to choose someone else. St. Paul made the conscious choice, no, I'm going to teach the truth no matter what the consequences are. That's what we are called to do, friends. We are called in very practical ways to stand up for others. Just before Mass, Rose came to the ambo and invited us all to a very important event on October 25th in our parish. We all have opinions on what happened to some of our indigenous brothers and sisters, but what are we doing about it? Well, the Holy Father came to do something about it, to inspire Canadians to do something about it, to inspire the Canadian Catholic Church to do something about it. What are we doing about it? Not just complaining, all oh, those people years ago. What are we doing to rebuild, to help our brothers and sisters? That's what it means to be a disciple. Jesus talking about division, friends, this is not permission to have dysfunction in our families. This is not Jesus saying permission, don't talk to your son or daughter. What Jesus is talking about is in the morals of our church. How many of us are silent and allow these things to continue? As Catholics, we are called to be pro-life, which means from womb to tomb. Just because the Canadian government says that it's okay to have an abortion, Jesus says the exact opposite. Just because the Canadian government says it's okay for physician-assisted suicide, Jesus says the exact opposite. And sometimes in our own Catholic families, there's this division because there's confusion. We aren't listening to Jesus Rather, we're thinking that we know what to do. And it's not up to Father Rico to say what to do. It's not up to you to say what to do, my brothers and sisters. It is rooted in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. How many of us know of somebody who is facing an unexpected pregnancy? What are we doing for them? Are we advising them? That, look, you're in a very difficult situation. I'm going to pray with you, and I commit myself to walk with you. I do this all the time as a priest. To be pro-life is not just to pray rosaries, although that's extremely important. We need to be rooted in prayer first. But prayer needs to be followed up by action. How many people are praying that psalm? Lord, come to my aid. I find myself in a very difficult position. Jesus has sent out the solution. Guess who he's sending, friends? Father Rico? Well, I'm one of the soldiers, right? but is God not sending you? Of course he is. And very real ways. And in many ways, friends, your witness will be more effective than mine because they are made already feel judged. Well, how can I talk to a priest about having sexual relations outside of marriage? I'm going to be judged. Friends, you're not going to be judged. Should we have those relations? No. But when we do, the church is there to walk with us. But many times, friends, you are exposed to these situations even before they come to my ear. Many times they may not even come to my ear. They're in your families. What are you doing about it? Well, we'll just let them do whatever they're doing because mass attendance. When's the last time you advised your loved ones to come to mass? Stop asking for things for your birthday and Mother's Day and Father's Day. You know what you should say? You know what would make me really happy? Come to mass with me. When we see our kids spiraling out of control and addiction and self-awareness issues, and then we've got confidence problems, etc. Why are these things happening? It's because we are far from God. When we are rooted in Jesus Christ, 
when we come to know him, when's the last time we solved one of our personal problems by opening the scriptures and letting God speak to us? When's the last time on a moral topic we looked at the catechism and says, what does the church teach us about this topic? We are not alone, friends. And yet, we look for all these other ways to find things. And Jesus is saying, no, don't follow pop culture. Don't always listen to what government leaders say. Don't always listen to what parents say if they're advising you wrongly. Follow what I say. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the one who will bring you peace. I am the one who is the source of your strength. My Holy Spirit will guide you. Friends, this is about regular everyday life. And how important it is as we see the world going sideways, it's because especially Catholics and Christians alike, we are keeping our mouths closed. And that isn't to say that we are part of the problem too. We are in many ways. And yet God is calling us to do something about it. First, to fall on our knees. But second, to be bold, to speak out, to walk with people. Pope Francis talks about this accompaniment, right? To walk with people, not to judge them. Well, you know, if you would just go to work, you wouldn't be a homeless person. No, that's not what we're called to do, even if it's true. How would we like it if people looked at us and just, you know, Judgment, 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 right? That, that's not being Christ-like. But how many times have God sent people to us who given us the benefit of the doubt, who kind of pushed us out of our laissez-faire attitude or our spiritual laziness and encouraged us to be different, who have rooted us back in the teachings of Jesus Christ? Friends, this is everyday stuff. In your family unit right now, there is somebody who is struggling. What are we doing about that? Are we just watching them? Or are we going to be bold? Are we going to be courageous and do something about it? And then to the stranger, how could God be using us to be like the Ethiopian, to be an advocate for other? If I'm not willing to speak out, And of course, in words, the way we say things, the way we do things, right? If I just shout at you all the time, you're all going to hell. Probably not an effective way of evangelizing, right? By the way, I don't believe that. I'm just using it as an example, right? Sometimes I am bold, like earlier in this homily, because I watch you guys. You're like space cadets, some of you. You're thinking about other things. What are we thinking about? We need to be thinking about Jesus. It's got to be a wake-up call. You parents out there. Your job is to discipline your children, right? Oh, we're just going to eat French fries and ice cream. Yeah, you know what? They're happier when they eat French fries and ice cream. Let them eat French fries and ice cream. Is that what you guys did as parents? Some of you did? Okay, fantastic. Good luck with that, right? No, you taught your children. You were bold parents. You set foundations and rules that were acceptable. And when your children balked at it, You stayed consistent. Why? Because you know what it means to be a good parent. Do we know what it means to be a friend of Jesus? We say we do, but a friend of Jesus is like St. Peter who's bold. A friend of Jesus is not somebody who remains silent when someone needs help. In this town of Grimsby, how many retired people do we have just sitting in this congregation right now? And yet when I walk and Father Steve walks into our senior homes, you know how many people would love a visit? Would love a visit from their own family members who are too busy to care for their loved one? What are we doing about it? When's the last time we visited? When's the last time we thought, hey, maybe somebody is a little bit lonely. Maybe I can give them a phone call. Doesn't that speak to being a courageous disciple of Jesus? And by the way, I'm not picking on retired people. All you people that work, that say you're so busy, if we actually look at our week, how many hours do we spend in caring for others as opposed to our own needs, or our own family needs, right? Jesus is calling us to be bold, to be active members of his family, to do something about it rather than to complain. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say, just complain, complain, complain. And yet that's what is so easy for human beings to do, just to complain. Bishop Burgi always says, Brother priests, 
I love when you bring to me a problem that is followed by a solution. Because when you're the leader, that's all you hear about are the problems. Everyone has an ability to identify a problem. A friend of Jesus not only recognizes the problem, but identifies a solution. And the solution is rooted in Jesus Christ. I met with somebody this week who's been called to be a missionary to university students. And his response to me was, Father Rico, when I started, I started to think, well, I'm a very wise man. I can determine what I should be doing. He says, now I pray so much about daily decisions that I almost don't make any decision before I run it by God. I said, wow, sounds like you figured it out, right? That's what we all should be doing. Not what I'm going to eat for breakfast, that some of you are still distracted and thinking about. When I want you to focus on, how am I going to guide this person? Many times, they're in my own family dynamic. What am I doing about it? And am I also open to the times in which the Holy Spirit is speaking through others to change me? Because while I think I have it all together, I'm a work in progress. A friend of Jesus that has much to learn. So friends, as we leave this place, we, like St. Paul, like the Ethiopian, like St. Peter, like Mother Teresa, like every single human being has to make a choice. Am I willing to be a courageous friend of Jesus that is going to speak for those who are most in need, those who are vulnerable, those who have no voice? Or am I just going to go back and continue to be part of the problem by being silent, identifying problems without any solutions? It seems obvious just hearing myself present the two options where we should be choosing. And yet for many of us, we choose the latter instead of the former. So let us ask God to bring us the gift of courage. Heavenly Father, on the day of our confirmation, you gave us the gift of courage. We know that you call us sometimes to some very uncomfortable situations, at times in which social trends or popular opinion goes against your teachings, and yet we still know what we should do. At times, Lord, we see family and friends who are struggling. Our first reaction is to not get involved, and yet our heart cannot be restful until we do what you are calling us to do. Lord, help us today to be bold. Lord, help us to be courageous. Lord, help us to be Christ-like, so that filled with your Holy Spirit, we may not be lukewarm, but rather be hot, hot with fire from you that brings peace to the world, that brings hope to the human heart, that brings faith to all people. Come, Holy Spirit. Come to our aid. As we stand before the throne of God, we do so with great pride in a God who cares for us and who fills us with the gifts of his spirit. And so we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God hears the cry of those who are in need, the cry of the faithful. Let us confidently place the needs of the world in God's hands and trust that he will respond accordingly. The response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the Lord may purify all that is good in his followers, thus enabling them to be generous and courageous people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those leaders who are genuinely working for peace and for a more just world, that the Lord may uphold them when they suffer because of this. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who are neither hot nor cold, who always play it safe, never getting involved in issues of justice and truth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who are caring for the sick, that they may show them care, patience, and compassion, and for our loved ones who are ill, especially Sarah Louch, Mary Roycroft, Anna Gadjik, Carolyn Danielle, Anna Zarcon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who have died. May they be happy forever in the kingdom of the Father, especially Katerina Presti, Jeanette Mazza, Gord Lewis, Father Bob Pirelli, Denise Perro, Ross Milana. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for Manny Coletti and Frank Nafik. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions we verbalize to God from the silence of our hearts. O oh God, you inflame our hearts with passion for the mission of your Son. Help us to be courageous, to stand up for those who have no one who has their support, to be the voice for the voiceless. Hear these prayers that we remain faithful to your call. We ask these in all things through Christ our Lord. Should I fear with God I fear no more? 
For through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. By this mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering he has canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. this Mass, we use Eucharistic prayer for Masses and various needs number three. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, Jesus, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when is once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus, mercy. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son and our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, 
and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, women religious, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all people, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. We remember especially Father Pirelli, Manny, and Frank, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, O God, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. They are in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, our husband, with your apostles and martyrs, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, Saint Teresa of Calcutta, Saint Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those at home receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be as co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls, amen. Good St. Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family. Protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. 
Keep us one and all under your continual protection so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. Friends, tomorrow is the feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Virgin Mary. What a beautiful opportunity for you to honor our Blessed Mother at Mass. Mass tomorrow is at 9 o'clock, followed by the Rosary. I invite all of our parishioners to participate in this celebration. Number two, tomorrow my podcast will begin its launch. So the, the episodes will take place on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Again, this is something the Holy Spirit has asked of me. I said, yes, John Paul is my producer, by the grace of God. It's going to be fantastic. So again, it's easy on every platform for podcasts to be heard. Make sure that you are listening yourself and to share those links with your children and grandchildren. We need to have Jesus in our ears. I am not Jesus, but his teachings will be through me in your ears because these are the ways to shape us. When we are rooted in Christ, then we make God-like decisions. I want everybody to be listening to this podcast. Not for me. I can assure you of that. I didn't want to do it. But God said, you better, Rico or else. So I said, fine. Right? So we open ourselves. We have to be courageous. So hopefully you'll see me being courageous a little bit here in the podcast. I'm having a lot of fun with it, actually. We're up to 45 episodes, so I can't wait to you hear everything that's about to be launched because it is the teachings of our church which guide us in our path to be saints. Speaking of saints, our theme of the Vacation Bible School all week has been angels and saints. Michelle led our young people and her team of wonderfully teaching our young people about many of the saints of our church, including St. Michael, that we pray that beautiful prayer as he protects us from the evil one. So may we continue to guide our young people as they prepare for a great sacramental year ahead at school and that every Sunday at Mass we are bringing them to come to know Jesus more. Our um, parish barbecue is next weekend. Again, the deadline is today. I'm tired of hearing myself talk about the invitation, invitation, invitation. Do you want to come to the barbecue? Do you want to come to the barbecue? This is the last day, friends. You need to register for the barbecue. I want you all there. But for those of you who are la-di-da, we need to order the food because to order a party for all of you takes time and preparation. The pastoral team, we're very busy. So today's the deadline. Get your, if you didn't yet get your numbers in, please do so today. You're all invited. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ.